In today's video, the ugly truth of being shredded. Dun dun dun. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Arbella from Pro Physique, and uh, today I got a special guest. This is Coach Kate. What's going on, guys? Also from Pro Physique, one of our amazing coaches here. And uh, today's topic is kind of right up your alley because you love to be shredded. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. So the question came on my Instagram direct message, and I'm going to read it here. I'll put it on the screen for, for you guys to read. But it basically says, what are the adaptations I, I would experience throughout a prep? And when should I experience these adaptations? And things like metabolism, um, bowel movements, sleep, fatigue, leptin, ghrelin, what's going on, what's crazy? And so I thought we would talk a little bit about this specifically because it definitely happens. It's a lot a of things of happen. being shredded is understanding those adaptations not overreacting and right. then also not underreacting and i think as coaches this is why we do check-ins with our clients we got to find out how they're doing right and it's important to understand that yes it's a part of the process but the duration and the extents at which you're experiencing them also matters yeah so let's talk about the first adaptation to prep and or dieting or getting shredded and i think that's hunger yes I think we all know that you're going to be hungry to lose weight, right? And I think a lot of people get very uncomfortable with that feeling. We're used to having food readily available, eating to satiety or even past that point. And so initially in fat loss, a lot of people struggle with that feeling of being hungry. Yep. And But that changes. Yes. So yes, I know for myself, and I think you can attest to this as well, when we get to a place where we're going to try to diet down, if I'm not hungry psychologically, I get a little worried. Like, okay, I'm not actually in a deficit. I'm not losing body fat if I'm not hungry throughout the day. Yeah, and then you think something is wrong or you know, you're know, you not doing it right or it needs to be harder for you um, to go through that process. Yeah. yeah, you actually start to look forward a little bit to the suffering and I think that's one of the things that, you know, maybe people don't understand about the process. Uh, it, it is a little bit about kind of self-control and how much you can deal with to yeah. a degree. Yeah. to a degree but i also think that opens the interpretation for bad coaching um where you know we hear some things with people doing like zero fats in their diet zero carbs in their diet and those things are not necessary and i'd say run run dangerous run away yeah so quickly there are some things we can do to kind of minimize the the adaptations um to getting shredded um but i think as far as hunger goes you don't really need to minimize it you know like something that's really popular is like fat burners yes Fat burners don't burn fat. You know what they do? They suppress your appetite. So they're more of an appetite suppressant, but guess what? If you eat less, guess what you do? You burn fat, right? So I guess technically that, that's their job, but the idea behind fat burners is that you're just not hungry. Um, and that's something that we do during dieting phases is try to find ways to avoid hunger. You know, we'll eat in a manner, we'll drink in a manner, right. we'll time our schedule in a manner so that we're limiting I guess our response to hunger because it can get bad and this is where you get into some binge eating and stuff. Yeah, and as you get leaner, um, you're going to find that hunger typically actually starts to spike right after you've started eating. So a lot of people practice fasting um, yeah. or expanding their feeding windows or minimizing their feeding windows so that they're going longer throughout the day because they just feel better. And then once you start eating, the body kind of signals more, right? It tries to get you yeah. to that. that um, state of mind to continue to eat more and so understanding those adaptations along the way you're going to want to shorten your feeding windows and making sure that you're probably eating more volume um so that that's probably one of the ugly truths about being shredded is that when you eat it's going to make you hungrier it's it's one of the worst things ever it's like you could have a, a good meal but then you realize oh i wasn't hungry all morning and then i had my breakfast at 11 30 noon yeah. um, and now i'm starving all day yeah and, and i mean that's just a part of it and honestly you're consistency with meal timing is what your body's going to adapt to so when you decide to eat if you do that consistently it's going to help your body's going to let you know when it's hungry um and we get into some good eating patterns so what are some other ugly truths about being shredded that that you noticed this year um the other thing that's going to happen especially if you're around other people or if you're in a relationship um sex drive will decline and if yeah. even if you're single you'll notice that you the thoughts that you have about the, the opposite sex they're just like not there anymore i could give or take you regardless of how good you look right now i'm more focused on getting through this training session and then going to have my next meal that's kind of how it goes yeah i mean the the association with low body fat and the hormone production that's happening in your body obviously reproduction is the primary function of sex that's not really important when your body is perceiving that there's not even enough food to put weight on you right so it makes sense that your hormones drop now i think um you know we're talking about the natural side of bodybuilding we compete uh, as natural athletes but yes. you can supplement with 
exogenous hormones. I think that's become a more common, especially with you know hormone therapy and hormone replacement stuff. Um, so you might be able to abate some of that, but there is always going to be some hormonal adaptations to lower body fat. Yeah, and one thing on the female side to pay attention to is your cycle. Um, you'll start to have infrequent cycles. Um, they'll be longer or shorter. You might see that you're spotting irregularly um, or symptoms of coming into a cycle and not necessarily having that. And it's really important to track your cycle throughout so that you know at which, which point you've lost it um, so you can pay attention to at which point it comes back. And this is highly individual. I know some girls will get really worried because they, they, they lose their cycle early on in the process. I've had some girls that even at stage weight completely shredded are still getting it every single month. Yeah. So it, it's highly individual. It's very variant for sure. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think one of the things that we've learned to do over the years with our athletes is do things like diet breaks and, yes. and refeeds. And I, I have found that oftentimes a diet break will kickstart a woman's female cycle. It's almost like the body goes, hey, we got some food let's get things going again yeah because it's not I, always fun for the woman no it's because you want to lose actually. weight and the hormones are kicking in and it's but i always think of it as a positive in the long term yeah i remember going into the arnold when we prepped for it we had free feeds before yeah. and i was like oh cool i'm still having my cycle and at some point you get and you if you get stage lineal experiences it's like a bump in the road like you don't want to have that like logically you should be like oh my gosh yay my hormones are great but in your head you're like wow my weight's up three pounds because i'm holding water because i'm about to have my cycle like that yeah cool. yeah and, and, and as much as if you're watching and you're thinking well that's just crazy um yeah we are crazy we are that is probably one of the other side effects of being shredded is that you are a little bit you're food focused Yes. your schedule focused. I know I get very particular and anal about my day. I want to make sure I have things planned out. I want yeah. things to go the way they need to go. Yeah. Um, and I don't do well when things aren't set up the way I want them to be. Yeah, you definitely schedule your time. You're less social. You have things that you need to get done. Time for meal prep, time to eat your last meal, time yeah. that you go to bed, time that you wake up, time that you're in the gym, time that you're working. I mean, everything's blocked off. Um, so that you can be as efficient as possible with the energy that you have to give during the day But by the end of the day, you're you're done. Yeah, and so that's actually a, a, good, a good point segue. is that your energy is going to fade throughout the day So what, what you'll find when you get very lean is when you wake up Well, first of all your your sleep cycles are going to be shorter I think that's that's something that I've come to expect, you know, I'm gonna sleep a little bit less this is a natural function of your body not having enough body fat it wants you up and looking for food yep. but I had great, I'll have great energy in the morning. I'll start the day off great. By middle of the afternoon, two, three o'clock, it's really dropping down. No matter how many Red Bulls I drink, it's not gonna really help get the energy up. It's just a matter of you're, you're just fading throughout the day. Yeah, and that's one thing that I will see. Like, I haven't trained yesterday. It's almost, what, I don't know, later in the day, three o'clock in the afternoon. I probably won't train till five. When I'm in prep, I'm getting up first thing in the morning and I go to the gym. That is yeah. when my energy is highest. That's when my performance is going to be the best. If I were to wait until this time when I'm shredded, I'm going to suffer through that training session and it is not going to be a good one. So another ugly truth of, you know, being lean is that your strength and your performance in the gym is going to suffer. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to lose muscle. I think a lot of people associate losing muscle with being a little bit less strong in the gym, but a lot of that can just be performance related. And it, and it doesn't mean you're actually not as strong because you've lost body fat. You might relatively be actually stronger. But what Kate said was that she trained earlier in the day to ensure that her performance is good. And that's going to help you maintain and keep your muscle throughout the process versus waiting till later in the day yeah. and having subpar workouts. This is where you can probably, you know, maybe lose some lean body mass along the way. So that is a risk of being shredded. And one of the ugly truths is that you are more at risk to, to lose lean body mass. Especially if you are prolonging the dieting phase um, and not using things like diet breaks and refeeds yep. and structuring carbs around training. That's another thing that people need to consider uh, that we're athletes and we come into this yep. to place to continue to prioritize retaining lean mass. And in order for us to do that, that means we might not be able to have a bigger meal before bed if we're focused on performance um, and making sure that we're feeling training and recovery properly um, throughout getting stage lean because it is certainly not an easy task. Yeah, and so some of the other fun things that you're gonna experience, you know, we're calling this the ugly truths, but the, the frequency of bowel movements, um, if you just think of it from this perspective, your body gets very efficient at breaking down food and storing it and using it, and you're taking in so few calories at times that 
I've had clients say, hey, well, you know, something's wrong. I didn't go to the bathroom today. Well, yeah, that's just a normal process that, that it's not necessarily fun to think about, but your body is just getting more efficient at extracting calories from the same amount of food. So it stays with you longer. So there might be a drop in frequency. And I know sometimes that can bother people mentally. Yeah, no, it's definitely something you struggle with, especially being like, I'm backed up. I haven't pooped in three days, <laughs> um, especially if it's a lot of vegetables that are just in your yeah. system and you're bloated and you're like, oh my God, I look awful in my check-in photos today. Um, you will be your worst critic throughout the entire process. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, this is why even when I prep, you know, even though I've been doing this for more than a decade and, and when Kate preps, we use a coach. We, we, we have somebody have an outside eye on us because you start to lose objectivity. You start to see the flaws versus the positives. Um, and I know you're probably asking yourself, why the hell do we even do this? I love it. I mean, I just, exactly. it's just one of those things, like if you're not excited about the struggle that you're about to go through, then you're probably not meant for the sport. And that's okay. It's not for everyone. It's not meant yeah. to be for everybody in my opinion. Um, but I, I, I love it. And I know that you learn a lot about yourself throughout that journey, um, how resilient you are and how resilient the body is in general. Yeah. And I think the more that kind of science and evidence-based approaches are being used, we are learning that, okay, there is a proper way, like frequency-wise, for how long you, sh how often you should get shredded, how long you should stay shredded, and we as coaches are, you know, we're taking longer between shows, we're making sure we're getting calories up and our hormones are in a good place before we diet down again. So there is a sustainable, healthy way to, to get shredded. It doesn't have to all be ugly, and I promise you, uh, there are some amazing positives. You know, you learn things about yourself, like time management, about how far you can push yourself. Yeah. You get tons of compliments from other people that, you know, sometimes that feels good. It's, it's, a, it's a good kind of confidence booster to say, wow, I'm, I'm actually doing something that very few people are able to do, to commit to. Yes, absolutely. And it's, it's just taking that first step. You know, it's like the first time you showed up at the gym. I'm sure you were like, I can't do that. But it's the same thing with prep. As soon as you see you get lean and you see all these different things that you can actually work through, um, you you find a lot of confidence in that and what you're capable of in the future. And it ties over into every element of your life. Yeah, and I think you know we all will look at people either on YouTube, Instagram, or whatever um, social media platform you look at, and you see people that inspire you. And honestly, what 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 got me through my prep many times was seeing like, okay, somebody else did this. I know I can do it. Right. I know I can get there. If they can do it, I can do it. And um, that allowed me to push through, and I'm glad I did. It, it changed my life for the better. So, yeah, there are some definitely some ugly truths. Any other things that, that pop out to you? There comes a point where it just sucks. It just hurts. Yeah. It, it sucks. But like, like Paul said, there is a responsible way to approach this. Um, and having a coach that not only understands how to use that, but can talk you through it, um, will help you get through and understand what's happening to your body and kind of give you that peace of mind and drop that stress yeah. as to the experiences that you're going through. Yeah, so uh, if you have any questions or comments, look below. Um, we'll go into the comment section and answer your questions. I'll put Kate's Instagram on the screen here. You can go drop her a direct message as well. You don't have to ask me all the questions. She can answer some questions as well. And uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.